Good morning and welcome to the Splash Live, Greater West Bloomfield's only local morning show, giving you exclusive access into people, businesses, and events in our community. We're bringing you this show live daily weekdays at 9.30 a.m. with your host, me, Maddie Mustion. Before we dive into today's show, every week we highlight someone here on the Splash Live, an educator, student, business, or organization from our Greater West Bloomfield community going above and beyond. If you would like to submit an entry for someone, you can scan the QR code on the screen and fill out the very short Google form with the person's name, their contact information, and some reasons why you think they should be recognized here on the Splash Live for our Person of the Week. Now let's go check out what's going on in our Greater West Bloomfield community. The first event we want to look at is the West Bloomfield Township Public Library virtual events. The West Bloomfield Township Public Library are hosting a ton of fun and educational events for residents in West Bloomfield in all age groups. Although their events have wrapped up for this week, you can begin registering for their great events next week, including their Monday virtual Earth Day story time. In this program recommended for ages three to five years, you'll celebrate all that the Earth has to offer through songs, stories, and interactive activities. On Tuesday, they have both their 9.30 a.m. and 11 a.m. virtual preschool smart money class, where your child will learn about the importance of money management through hands-on interactive stories and song. Your child will learn about the use of money and how to save it through their virtual program recommended for ages three to five years. For these events and all other virtual events at the library, you can register through their website at westbloomfieldlibrary.org. Something else that is also ongoing at the library is your ability to rent out those great literacy and tender topic kits that help your child with literacy skills and ways to learn about tough topics that are happening in our community. If you want to rent out one of those kits, you can do so by stopping into the library or calling the Youth Services Desk to reserve that kit of your choice. Our next event we want to look at is the Sylvan Lake History Talk. Join Sylvan Lake historian Helen Jane Peters on Thursday, April 28th at 6.30 p.m. at the Sylvan Lake Community Center to learn more about the history of the Sylvan Lake community. All Sylvan Lake residents are welcome and there will be snacks and beverages provided as you learn more about the prettiest little city in Michigan. Helen Jane will walk, through the, walk the group through the history of how Sylvan Lake started, where the land was bought from, and so much more, so make sure to bring your questions for her that she will answer at the end of the presentation. The last event we want to look at is the Sylvan Lake Swap and Sale. If you're looking to either sell or donate your outgrown or unwanted un outdoor items, Sylvan Lake is hosting their first annual Sylvan Summer Swap and Sale on May 1st from 11 to 4 p.m. Here you can bring your items such as kayaks, beach games, lake gear, and other summer re related objects to either donate, sell, or swap with a neighbor. Check in for this event will go on from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. and the actual sale and swapping of items will begin at 11 a.m. If you have any questions, you can contact Missy Markham at 248-480-6080. If you have an event you'd like us to feature here on the Splash Live, you can send us a message on our social media pages at Civic Center TV and on Facebook at Civic Center TV 15. Coming up, I'll be talking with Suzanne Levine, Executive Director for the Greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce. But before that, I got to experience what it's like to be a kid again, but in an environment that promotes movement and learning. Swag Kids Gym, located in West Bloomfield, is providing classes for children as young as 10 months that mix in fun and gymnastics with lessons on learning on confidence and sharing. I got to talk with the owner of Swag Kids Gym about the class and how it helps kids. Let's go check it out. Kids need exercise, and a business in Greater West Bloomfield is making that happen in a fun and educational way. Swag Kids Gym combines exercise with learning that promotes socialization in children. Ralph Tompkins, owner of Swag Kids Gym, talks a little bit about the classes that they have and how they impact the kids that come into the gym. Sorry about some of those technical difficulties that we're having here with the video. We'll be playing that all next week, so if you want to tune in to check out Swag Kids Gym, you can do so by tuning into the Splash Live next week at 9 a.m. We're going to take a quick break here on the Splash Live, and then we'll come back with some of the great programming that we have for you this Friday morning. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this break. We'll be right back with the Splash Live. In the face of COVID-19, staying healthy is important. 
And now the same is true as we face the flu. Influenza has the potential to infect millions, putting lives and the healthcare system at risk. Fortunately, it's easy to protect yourself. The flu vaccine is safe and effective, and with COVID-19 still spreading, it's essential. To see how you can hit this virus head on, visit michigan.gov slash flu. Can I ask you a question? Uh, Why do you want to get the COVID-19 vaccine? I don't like getting sick. The virus will die. It will be easy to not catch it. Keep my family safe and keep playing soccer. Because I love being vaccinated. What's your hope for everyone? I hope everybody gets the vaccine. To keep safe and strong. Be like happy, having fun everywhere. Everyone stay safe and hope you get the vaccine. And now, back to The Splash, live. Welcome back to The Splash Live. I'm your host, Maddie Mushin. It's now time to look at our person of the week this week who has impacted the greater West Bloomfield community through her work on the West Bloomfield Diversity Task Force and her involvement with yoga classes for children with autism at the Jewish Community Center. Let's go check out why we named Nicole Ferguson our person of the week. Our person of the week this week is someone who has worked in numerous different areas of the West Bloomfield community to make sure our residents are staying healthy and mindful. We named Nicole Ferguson our person of the week because of the various areas that Nicole works in to bring knowledge to the greater West Bloomfield community. Nicole Ferguson is a health and wellness coach that works with members in our community to reach their fitness goals and stay healthy. She's also participated in community talks and events, such as the Love Yourself Wellness While Black event to celebrate Black History Month, where she talked about staying active and how it can benefit your overall well-being. Nicole is also a member of the West Bloomfield Diversity Task Force, which aims to create and support diversity in Greater West Bloomfield through hosting events, workshops, and talks that create dialogue about diversity and inclusion. She talked with us on The Splash Live about some of the ways that the West Bloomfield Diversity Task Force impacts our community. Well, the task force, well, I think right now is over 20 folks and we all have ideals of what we might wanna bring to the table. And we actually start like in August with planning and we meet once a month, we throw out some ideals, we throw out a timetable and what we would like to see happen possibly and um, we kind of form subcommittees. And in these subcommittees, we, um, we meet, um, we might have small meetings, but as we get closer to Black History Month, we start to meet a little bit uh, with more regularity. Nicole also works in the community with children with autism. She uses her personal experience with her son as inspiration to use yoga as a tool to help those children regulate their emotions through movement. She teaches classes through the Jewish Community Center as a way to bring together families and children who are diagnosed with autism and learn those great skills that yoga gives. Nicole is also a passionate chef and uses her experience with her own health and wellness journey to make tasty food that's good for you. She has joined us on the Splash Live before to teach us how to make Sylvan Tables coffee cream bread pudding while also putting her own spin on it with healthy alternatives. And then I would top it off. Oh, thank you, that off. With whipped cream. And then I would do a little bit of a sprinkle. Oh, perfect. Of cinnamon. Awesome. Ta -da! Her passion for the Greater West Bloomfield community and commitment to educating our residents on various topics such as diversity, health, and autism awareness is why we named Nicole Ferguson our Person of the Week. Thank you so much to Nicole Ferguson for all of the work that she does in our community with those yoga classes at the Jewish Community Center and all of the great work that she does with the West Bloomfield Diversity Task Force. For more information on those yoga classes, you can contact the Jewish Community Center and get information on how to sign your child up. Joining us now to talk about the Greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce and give some advice and tips to new business owners who are looking to get out and promote their business is Suzanne Levine, Executive Director for the Greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce. Suzanne, thanks so much for joining us again today. 
Good morning. I feel like it's Groundhog's Day, and here we are again. Well, luckily, it's a beautiful day out, so I'm not yes. complaining. <laughs> same here. Same here. Thank you for having me. Suzanne, could you give us some of, of um, advice for new business owners in our greater West Bloomfield community? You're very involved with all of the businesses here in the community and are helping them, giving them advice um, to promote their business. But for those new business owners who are either starting a company here in the greater West Bloomfield area or um, a company that maybe started in the pandemic and is looking to promote themselves, can you give some advice for the best ways to do that in our community? Well, one great way that the Chamber offers our members is a ribbon cutting. It's a great way to introduce your business to the community because we send out several, several flyers. We invite the township supervisor and our board members and just try to get the community to understand that you're a new business and we hope to welcome you and do business with you. And then Suzanne, for those business owners who are looking to start up a business in Greater West Bloomfield, from the work um, and your experience that you've seen in our community, have you given, um, can you give us some advice for any of those new startups and their best way to succeed here in the greater West Bloomfield community? I think one of the first steps they should take is avail themselves of the free service that Oakland County offers, the One Stop Business Center, and they can tell you sort of predict your, your business success. For example, if there are 20 beauty salons in the area to open up another one might be a little bit difficult because a lot of these salons already have a loyal following. So they kind of look at the, you know, the demographics of the businesses and try to predict, you know, what your success will be and they can help you with grants and loans and direct you to a lot of resources, look at your business plan and see if, you know, if there's going to be any um, obstacles in your way. So that's one of the one of the big things that I advise people to do. Also, maybe contact our township and find out about, you know, what they need as far as, you know, building and zoning kind of compliance. Um, you know, sometimes they just enter into things and have all kinds of ideas and really haven't really looked at what, you know, the township offers as far as, you know, services to help them be successful. And Suzanne, at the Greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce, you guys have a ton of great resources for the businesses in our community, especially those startups and new businesses. Can you tell us a little bit about some of those um, Google classes that you guys have to um, work with businesses to promote their business, whether that's online or in um, marketing in person, as well as some of those um, people that you have in the Greater, Greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce that are going to help these business owners start up in our community? Well, we're very fortunate because our current president, Vito Kukuru, is also a marketing guru, and he has been so instrumental in helping us get a footprint in social media, Twitter, LinkedIn. He teaches free classes, and these are open to anyone that wants on email marketing, uh, how to get attention to your website. And so um, I urge everyone to go to our website, westbloomfieldchamber.com, and see when he offers these free classes because we know that today social marketing, media marketing is so important to your business. Um, a lot of the traditional ways of doing business, you know, sending out uh, flyers, et cetera, a lot of people dispose of those. So that's one thing that I urge people to really look into their resources. I know small businesses don't have a lot of financial um, at their disposal to, you know, spend on marketing, but it's really something that's very important, um, especially today. And also if there are any places that they can go and market their business because they are the best person to talk about their business and take their business cards and make sure that they follow up with every single connection they make. Uh, whether it's here's a 10% off, why don't you come in and have a cup of coffee, um, learn more about our business. Um, and for example, next week we have a ribbon cutting for Evolve Body Sculpting, which um, I know I could use some of their services. So they're going to be doing it uh, next to the 26th at from 4 to um, I believe it's 8 p.m. So you can go to our website again and check out the details. Um, and Bushes is having a reopening. They redid their um, supermarket and we were so happy to have them part of our chamber. And one of the things that I've been able to engage them with is to continue our SOS support our shops. 
except this time they will be giving out the gift cards. So there are a lot of opportunities to, you know, bring people into your business. Um, our cup of connections, we allow non-members to attend for um, a $10 fee. Um, on May 20th, it's going to be at Samaritas. Uh, senior living in Bloomfield Hills. So again, check out our website and you know make sure that there is no second chance for a first impression. So when you're out in the community, whether at a restaurant, whether you're at one of these meetings, that you always are promoting your business in a positive way, not an aggressive way, but a positive way. And Suzanne, as we wrap up here, is there anything else that you wanted to share either to those new business owners that are starting up in our Greater West Bloomfield community or about any of the other events and programs that you guys have at the Greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce? Well, again, the Chamber's here to help you strategize about not just how to get more, you know, B2B, but also how to make networks with other people that might be a great connection for them. Um, for example, Profile by Sanford, which is um, sort of a diet nutrition um, business, if I, I connected them with this Evolve Body Sculpting. So trying to find, you know, mutual businesses that um, might be able to do, you know, different promotions within the businesses, even if it's just having their business cards there. So there are a lot of ways for businesses to promote themselves. And I urge everyone, you know, especially a new business to go to Oakland County and avail themselves of these really fabulous services. Uh, I don't think people are aware of all the great classes and services they offer. Well, Suzanne, it's always a pleasure to see you on Friday morning. Thank you so much again for joining us and giving us all that great information for business owners here in the greater West Bloomfield community. Thank you and have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Once again, I was joined by the executive director for the greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce, Suzanne Levine, talking about some of those great piece of, pieces of advice for new business owners here in our greater West Bloomfield community. We got to take a look inside one of those great um, nonprofits here in the greater West Bloomfield community. I got to take an inside look into the Hospitality House Food Pantry located here in greater West Bloomfield and talk to the executive director, Michael Fraley, about some of their programs and the food pantry there. Let's go check it out now. Greater West Bloomfield is home to a ton of great organizations that are giving back to the community. We visited one of those organizations that is providing choices that normal food pantries may not always have. Executive Director of Hospitality House Food Pantry, Michael Fraley, talked to us about their organization and how they're positively impacting the community. So most of the clients that we are serving are those um, who are living in poverty currently. So we serve anyone that's 200% above the federal poverty level. Um, so for a single individual, that's anyone that's making $25,000 and less. And then as the family members increase, so does that income level. Um, but we actually serve a lot of families with children. But we also serve a lot of single individuals, um, especially those living on social security disability and social security. Those individuals only make about $800 a month from the federal government. Um, that's barely enough to cover rent, let alone food sources. Um, and so most likely individuals we see, they're already on food stamps and we are an enhancement to that program. Um, and so we fill in the gaps where food stamps um, can't. So as you can see, our pantry is set up like a store. Um, and so clients are able to choose the food they want. And that power of choice is something that I really have realized that I take for granted personally. Um, people who are living on food stamps, people with limited income, or people who are visiting food pantries, they don't necessarily have that choice. And so we try to stock different types of juices and breakfast items. That way they can choose the food that suits them best. We're also reducing food waste that way. And um, we're not just a food pantry. We also put homeless clients into hotel rooms up to 28 days um, with case management services. We offer a car repair program that helps clients to repair their car. Um, so we financially contribute towards that. Um, we've helped fix alternators, tires, transmissions. Um, and then we receive a lot of food that we can't utilize. So we help support eight area soup kitchens um, that can use the food immediately that day, as along with we provide food to the Walt Lake Student Pantry Group. Um, and we're helping to feed Afghan refugees. Volunteers and donations are what keeps Hospitality House running in order to help our community and make up a large part of the items that they get in their pantry. 
So we rely heavily on volunteers. We are a very small staffed organization. It's myself and two other small employees. And so we rely heavily, especially in the warehouse, to receive our food shipments in and out. Um, we rely on the generosity of volunteers to come and help us out with that. If anyone's interested in volunteering, they can go to www.hhfp.org um, and they can sign up for either long-term opportunities or short-term opportunities. And then as far as donations, you can go to our website and donate. We also rely heavily on donations. We have been fortunate to be so supported by the local community. Um, we use those donations in a number of ways. First and foremost, to purchase food, um, because not all the food that we do, we do have to purchase some of the food, but we also have to pay for the refrigeration for the food, um, the lights and the electricity and the gas for the building. Um, without that, we wouldn't be able to operate. Um, so your generosity is much appreciated. For more information, you can visit the Hospitality House Food Pantry website at hhfp.org to volunteer and also to donate. Reporting for The Splash Live, I'm Maddie Mustion. Thank you again to Michael Fraley for giving us an inside look into the Hospitality House Food Pantry and telling us about all of the other great programs that they have to offer. For more information to donate and volunteer, you can go to hhfp.org for all that information. Joining us now to talk about the Rotary Club of West Bloomfield Speaker Series Breakfast is the speaker for this month's breakfast, Rochelle Riley, Director of Arts and Culture for the City of Detroit. Rochelle, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thank you very much for having me. So Rochelle, can you start off by telling us a little bit about your background and what it means to be the Director of Arts and Culture for the City of Detroit? Oh my goodness, I spent uh, many years as a journalist, the last uh, 19 of my career as a nationally syndicated columnist for the Detroit Free Press. And when I decided to leave the newsroom, not retire, because I'm too young to retire, but to see what my pivot would be, I talked with the mayor of Detroit, who I'd known for almost two decades and said, I'm leaving the newsroom. I want to find a theater and, and uh, literally create you know, a theater. I'll take a theater management, get a theater management master's at Wayne State and I'll do that. All he heard was the, the word theater. And we started talking uh, from that point on about the need for the city to be more engaged in helping its creative workforce. So that is the job. I oversee the city's investment in the arts. I nurture artists. I, um, I, I am their ace downtown. <laughs> And Rochelle, you will be speaking at the upcoming Rotary Club of West Bloomfield Speaker Series Breakfast coming up this month. Can you tell us a little bit about what you will be speaking about there? Well, it only has to do with art peripherally because it mostly comes from my work as an author because in addition to my, uh, my day job, which is kind of my side hustle, as a friend once told me, make sure that your main job is what you love to do. And for me, I've been a writer by trade, warrior by necessity for a long time. I wrote a book called The Burden, African-Americans and the Enduring Impact of Slavery. And I have spoken out around the country about um, how we're never gonna fix the racial divide that we have until we actually admit that it has been a part of the DNA of our country for some time. So uh, this is actually a conversation I was invited to have uh, about race, what are you afraid of? Why do we not want to talk about it? Why do we not want to deal with it so that we can improve so much of the relationships that exist between the races and all cultures in America? And Rochelle, could you talk a little bit about the, um, the topic of racism in America and how you are going to be bringing that to the speaker series breakfast that we are having for the Rotary Club of West Bloomfield and talk about a little bit of the um, themes that you'll be talking about as well as some of the impact that you hope to make at the breakfast. Well, the, the main thing that, that we hope to cover, the main thing that we hope to do is have a conversation because you know people have been talking at each other literally for over a century about these issues that arise from the fact that our country was founded on racism. It was founded on slavery. It was founded on uh, a, a free job labor, free labor that built the country. And so nobody wants to talk about that. There are efforts to hide the history of that. And that's why we never have really open, honest discussions. So what we're gonna do is talk about what racism looks like. Um, for anybody who is not black or Hispanic or a person of color who says, oh, well, racism is, isn't a problem anymore. Well, it's not a racist problem for them. But if you can't even see it, then you don't understand why George Floyd was killed. You don't understand why people who are of color still have trouble getting loans from banks. 
you don't understand how hard it is for people to become uh, successful in some of the careers that they have. And, and the main thing we want to do is just talk about that understanding and push the envelope a little bit on that understanding. And Rochelle, what does it mean to be able to be speaking at the Rotary Club breakfast and be asked to present um, on your great book and the experience that you have with um, art and racism in the city of Detroit? Well, I have been a fan of Rotary for decades. As a matter of fact, I've spoken to so many different Rotary clubs. I should put them on a map. I have a map in my home of all the different places I've visited in America and around the country. There are 28 countries, 33 states. I should put Rotaries too, because when I'm called on for the Rotary or any library, because this is also the Ann Arbor District Library that's co-sponsoring this, uh, I'm a library person. I was a library page when I was in high school. That was my first job. And um, I, I think that the way we get to understand each other is to understand our cultures and to have those conversations. So it means the world to me, first of all, that people want to have them. To be invited by the Rotary is such an honor. And uh, it, it means that people care. It means that we, we have folks literally on both sides of this racial divide in our country who want to talk about it and who want things to be better. And Rochelle, could you give us some information um, for our viewers that are interested in purchasing and reading your book, how they can go about doing that um, and getting a little bit more information on the talk that you'll be doing at the Speaker Series Breakfast for the Rotary. Thank you so much. The conversation is a breakfast conversation, which means it's going to start early. I think it's 7 or 7.30, and if they go to the District Library site or the West Bloomfield Rotary, they can get details of that. If they want to know anything about me or my books, they can go to RochelleRiley.com. I encourage people to follow me on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter feed sometimes has smoke rising from it, but you'll have a lot of fun. Um, but April 28th, it's a breakfast. It's going to be a uh, it's going to be enlightening. It's going to be powerful. And I'm thrilled to talk with people instead of talk at people about something that we can fix. And Rochelle, as we wrap up here, is there anything else that you want to share with our viewers here, either about the work that you're doing for the city of Detroit or anything else that you want to share at this time? Well, the city of Detroit did not have an Office of Arts and Culture for almost 20 years when the mayor gave me this job. So one of the things that I'm doing is making sure that that's never true again. So we're looking for ways to make sure that we sustain it and turn it into something permanent so it can be a permanent supporter and lobbyist for artists, that it can be a way to develop uh, you know, neighborhood transformation through the arts. And I want everybody to be proud of what Detroit is. We're known globally for our creative arts. I mean, literally everywhere around the world. But I don't think we really believe it. We're not really embracing who we are. And I want to build that pride. Because even though the city government, you know, bakes the bread and created this office, it takes everybody to keep it buttered. So I want people to really just support and, and, and love on our, our creative arts community because it really is nationally renowned. Well, Rochelle, it was such a pleasure talking to you this morning. Thank you so much for joining us and giving us all that great information on the things that you are doing in the city of Detroit, as well as the Rotary Club um, Speaker Series Breakfast that you will be participating in. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was great to talk to you. Good interview. <laughs> Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. Once again, I was joined by the Director of Arts and Culture for the City of Detroit, Rochelle Riley, talking about some of the great things that she is doing in the City of Detroit, as well as at Speaker Series Breakfast for the Rotary Club of West Bloomfield. That's going to do it for today's show. Thank you again to Suzanne Levine and Rochelle Riley for joining us this morning on the Splash Live. A special thanks to our Zoom producer, Jared Clark, for coordinating the Zoom and making sure our guests joined us. As always, a huge thank you to Calvin Brown, our director and board operator, for making this show possible each and every morning. And thank you for joining me as we explored all of the people and events in our greater West Bluefield community. As always, you can make sure to tune in live on civiccentertv.com and Civic Center TV on Comcast Channel 15 and at t Channel 99, Monday through Friday at 9.30 a.m. to catch up on what's going on in our greater West Bloomfield community. To watch all of our archived interviews and stories, you can head over to civiccentertv.com or our YouTube page at Civic Center TV. For all of our friends in Orchard Lake, Sylvan Lake, Kegel Harbor and West Bloomfield, I'm Maddie Mushin. Thank you for watching The Splash Live.